Hello, everyone. All right. Welcome to Physics with a Bang. 2017, we're delighted to see all of you here. We have a great show coming up. I'm Heinrich Yeager. I'm Sid Nagel. And you're here, I suppose, to hear a bang. Are you ready for a bang? Yeah. OK. Oh. Wait a second. There are still people coming in. Grab your seat. All right, so. OK, are you ready? Let me dim the lights a little bit. Ready. OK. Here, Here we, we go. go. Watch out. <laughs> Okay, so was that loud enough? Should we hear another one? things that we get to do in this, um, in this show is to play back some of the things that you saw. So you, you heard it, but you probably didn't see it that well. And we have two wonderful photographers here, Nidhi Pashina, Kaito, who are running our high-speed cameras, and they will now show you what you could have seen if you had really fast eyes. Yeah, and how fast do you have to be to see that? 5,000 frames per second, so are we ready to put that on maybe in a second? Not quite, okay. We gotta find the critical moment when it is about to blow. And so in a second or two, we have that. All right. Okay. Good. So here you see the balloon, and there's the flame, and see how the balloon pulls back, and now the chemistry slowly gets going, but boy, does it blow and give an amazing explosion. Right? So that was hydrogen in that balloon. That's made it a little louder than the normal stuff. Boom, and we Boom see that's right. Exactly what happened. All right. OK, so now we need a volunteer. Who can be a volunteer? Would you like to be a volunteer? So why don't you come on down because we need your help. Okay, right. so we need you over here. So what should we do, Heinrich? Well, that was one balloon, another balloon. We were thinking we should now do three balloons at once. Three balloons? Oh. You see those three balloons? Now we've got three so balloons we're try and let them go. That's going to be very dangerous, so we want to be far away from it. So we're coming right over here. Yep. So this is where, we, now we need you to help on this. So if I turn this up, and now you see that there's some light there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take this light bulb here and have it reflect onto that and maybe have that catch fire. Okay? So that's the idea. So will you help me turn this up? So turn it up a little bit at a time. No, the other way. Out and notice we want to make okay, that point no, over there. Bit, so a little bit slowly. Wow, look at oh, that. Oh, started. There you go. Wow. So thank you very much. So one of the uh, uh, ideas behind the show is that we're going to tell you about transportation of various kinds. And so, you know, uh, planes, trains, automobiles, and the like. And so one of the things that you know about what keeps your planes up in the air is this thing called the Bernoulli effect. And so if you take a piece of paper and you blow over it, what you would think is that's going to blow things out of the way. But the Bernoulli effect tells you that if 
air is flowing rapidly, it actually has lower pressure, so it lifts something into the path of, the, of where you're blowing. Let's see so that. let's see if I can do that. OK, so you see that I'm blowing over the paper, not under it, and yet it still comes up into, the, uh, into where I'm blowing. Well, that is nice, Sid, but, but it's a little pathetic, don't you think? Little, a little pathetic. Small, the paper. So I think we should do it industrial style. Big paper. OK, so here is the industrial style way that we're going to do this. And so we're going to take this and put it over the sheet of paper. And now we're going to turn it on. Oh, it would help if it was plugged in. Yep. That's always in trouble with industry. It has to get plugged in. OK. Good idea. Okay, that was kind of good. So but that, that gives me an idea. I what think what we do you think we should do? More. We should let's do, do more, more okay. and we should blow things. Okay, so let's try something else. Let's try a little bit more action here. So are you ready, everyone? toilet paper if you want. I mean, that's, that's your, uh, 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 if you want. Okay, so now, now I'd like to ask, uh, how many of you play musical instrument? So a lot of you play musical instrument, and so you know that there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind when you're playing. One is to get the tune right. The other thing is that you have to get the rhythm right. You have to keep the beat, right? And so how do you keep the beat? Well, you're your uh, music teacher probably comes and with a metronome, and so he gives you the beat so you can keep up with the beat. So that's what we have here. We have a metronome here to show you how this thing uh, behaves. And so here we have this high precision metronome, and so it keeps the beat. beat, 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 beat. Just like that, okay? So, but if one is good, two is better, right? So we will put two metronomes together. And if two is good, how about three? <laughs> Four? Four. Well, we can only do one more at a time. And how about that last one? Someone said five? Here we go. Let's do five. OK. OK, now listen to the beat now. No, well, gee, I mean, I certainly would have a hard time trying to keep time to that. I mean, that's not very good, is it? So what can we do about this? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this board and just place it on top of these two soda cans. And see, the only thing we did differently now is we moved it onto something that can move itself. Okay, so there we go. So that was, that was something about sound, and we're going to stick with that. And now we will actually show you how you maybe can visualize sound. We can hear it, but now the question is, can we maybe also see it? OK, so what we have here, what we used to have here, we're still good. Don't panic. 
Okay, so. Okay, so um, what, I'm just waiting for this thing to be plugged in. Okay, so what we have is uh, uh, a tube of, with a bunch of holes in it. And what Heinrich is going to do is he's going to turn on some gas from over there. And then I'm going to light this tube. And you're going to see all these little holes have flames coming out of them because that's where the uh, gas is coming. So let's. Okay, so here you see this set of flames coming up. Okay, so you see all of these flames, very holiday spirit-like, right? So this is very nice, but what is the idea behind this? Well, the idea behind this is that all of these flames are roughly the same height. They're all, uh, you know, Basically the same, but if I put in a uh, note from this speaker here, so you can see that the whole thing has waves in it now. So what you see is that where the pressure is largest, there's more gas coming out, and so you see a taller flame. So you see different notes will have slightly different places where there's a, the, the wave is going to be. So, Is this where you're supposed to sing now? Come on. Thank you so much. All right, so that was nice and just in the spirit here for the holidays. But this is physics with the bang. So we got to see what sound can do when you crank up the volume. And one of the things that we have in mind now is increase the volume so much that the sound can get dangerous. Sid, what are we going to do? So, well, I don't know. It looks like there's a wine glass in here, but it doesn't have anything in it, so it's kind of useless that way. Right. <laughs> so this is a, it's a real wine glass. I don't know if you can hear that. Right. Thank you. It's glass. And we will now have two speakers here, and we will create such an intense sound pressure that it may be well, well we'll see what it's going to do. Do something interesting. So yeah. I'll just show you with the camera what it will do. But you might want to be ready to, to put your fingers in your ears. You'll know when this is happening. I mean, it isn't as if uh, you won't be aware of this one. And so Andrew here. So this is Andrew. So let's give a hand for Andrew. So you can see the, uh, this live. Sometimes the glass is a really good, strong glass. It has no chance against either the sound or the hammer. So we give the glass a choice, right? And this time, the glass took the hammer. But what we want to do is we don't want to shortchange you. We will now try another glass, because you want to see what really happens, right? Can we, can we uh, do that one more time? You know, we want to see this. This really, we, we want to see this. This is too good not to see.
All right, so one more time. Okay, so one in, uh, show it up on top. go that's how it's done all right so we'll just wait a second to play that back for you okay So one thing we can maybe tell you while we're waiting for this to be spooled up is that these cameras that we use right here, can you hear me? That these cameras, they're used in our research actually. So these are very nice research grade cameras that can go up to possibly a million frames a second, which is, is very important for some of the research that's being done in, in our labs here. But at this point, we don't need to go that high and the frame rate is how high? 10, it's only 10,000 frames a second. So let's see here where we are. So this is now uh, played back, recorded at 10,000 frames and then played back in slow motion. And so you can really see how that glass tries to resist and then cracks. Okay, so uh, what we now want to uh, do is show you something else that gases can do. And so for this, it's going to take a little time, so that means I have to tell you a story while we're doing this. And so the story is um, something that you can actually see on YouTube. And so uh, on YouTube, there's this uh, uh, you know, short movie about someone who was in the middle of winter trying to fill the gasoline into their car. And so it was a cold day, and so this person came out, and they put uh, the, the uh, gas uh, uh, into the car, and it was cold, so they went back into the car, and they sat there for a while while the car was filling up. And so as it was filling up, they stayed warm, but then they came out after it was all filled, and this person made one fatal mistake, and the fatal mistake was that they then touched the gas handle, gas pump handle, and the whole car blew up. And so the thing burst into flames, and this was captured on their uh, in the uh, security cam, and so you could see this whole thing happening. And so this was, uh, you know, what was the lesson to be learned from this? Well, the lesson is that gases are rather dangerous, especially flammable gases, and that you should be very careful of any sparks. What, the, what happened was this person got out of their car and there was a, they had static electricity on their clothes and touching the car ignited a small spark which then blew up all the gas around it. And so that's what we're gonna try and do here. <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so you don't have to move that far away but uh, we'll be, try to be a little bit more careful. And so uh, what we have here is I've put some liquid ethanol into this container, this big contain, uh, water bottle. And I've been swirling it around all this time to coat the sides and get a lot of the um, gas evaporated inside of this. And so now what I'm going to try and do is ignite this thing. And so, are you ready? Show this and so now. What we want to do is we want to see what this thing looks like. And so, here it goes. So, uh, Nitty, are you ready? Okay. Oh. 
Wow. Okay, so that's what this thing uh, does. So that was pretty good. So let's see if we can do the same thing over again. But uh, this time we let the bottle go someplace. Let's see if we put it in here, if we can hit sit with that one. Oh, no. <laughs> it's still on fire. Nice and warm. It's toasty on a cold winter day. Okay. So, so we'd like to show you what you just saw, but in slow motion, once again. So let's see, are we, are we ready? Okay. Wait one second. Hang on. Hang on, Chief. Hang on, Nudie. I want to make it a little bigger here. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. So that's the reaction starting at the top, and then the thing just turns into a beautiful explosion and rocket. And it keeps spewing at the top like a geyser. And we see that now played back at some low, slow mo with what? How many? 500 frames. 500 per frames per second. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So now we'd like to show you a little bit about liquids here. And so um, this is just an ordinary container, and it's filled with some liquid. And I have a rod that I'm stuck in here. So you can kind of see what liquids do uh, when you look through them. That is, you can see that this rod looks bent or displaced from each other once it's in the liquid versus where it's sticking out of the liquid. And so this is just to show you that there's this thing called index of refraction, which is different from the air, from the liquid. And so when you see through this, light gets bent as it goes through this interface here. So that's what uh, having this. Uh, liquid is uh, helping us to do is to see this effect of index of refraction. So uh, another thing that we can do with this is, uh, well, can you read this? Yeah. It says bang. So you can read this. C can you read this? Yeah. Uh, it's a gnab, gnab, <laughs> right? So uh, it's uh, not, not very easy to read. And so what we want to do now is to show you what it looks like if you pass it behind this. So now we're able to see this thing go in the forward direction. Gnab becomes bang. Okay? Can and so this is because this liquid in here is acting like a lens. And so this, as a lens, it now reverses the side of, of the, the image from one side to the other. And so this is what we got to, to see in this uh, cylindrical lens. But there's one other thing that this uh, liquid is able to do, which is uh, you know, almost magic. And so what I have here is a glass tube. You can all see this glass tube? Yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this glass tube in this container here, and I'm going to take this hammer, and I'm going to smash this glass tube. So where is it? Okay, so. Okay, so what we have is we have now a broken glass tube. Is that right? We could all attest that it's broken. So why and would so, you do that, Sid? Well, I want to see the magic properties of this fluid. Ah. Okay, so I'm, now I'm going to pour this in here, and so we're going to see. You can see it all sinking. And now, what I want you to see is what this magic fluid can do. Is able to put that <laughs> glass all back together again. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, of course, this is not a magic anything. This is 
science, this is physics. And so what you should see is as I put this glass back in, it basically disappears as it goes into this liquid. And the reason for that is we've chosen this liquid in this glass to have that same index of refraction that I just told you about. Okay, so you can see it here easily, but once it's encoded inside that other fluid, it becomes basically invisible to see. Okay, and so this is the liquid that we have here is glycerol, and I want to show you something else that we can do with glycerol at this point. Okay, so Heinrich, if if you take liquid and you stir it up, I things mixed get stuff. mixed. I mean, that's why we do stirring, right? We want to mix things. Yeah, you stir it and you mix it up, right? And that's, you, can you ever unmix something? Not me. No, oh, no, it's very difficult to unmix something, right? If you put something in and you stir it up, it's gone. And you're never going to get it back, right? That's the problem. Well, we want to show you that as physicists, we have ultimate power. And we're <laughs> going to try and make that not work, okay? So. What we have here is a cylindrical plastic container on the outside. On the inside, we have another cylinder, and this is a white cylinder, and I'm stirring, turning it around, and it's uh, going round and round in a circle. But between these two cylinders, I have some of this fluid. So there's fluid in between here, and- Can you see you, it? Can you you see can't really see it, can you? It's no. see-through. It's Clear, so. so whatever I tell you, you have to believe because it's clear, right? I mean, <laughs> but so let's make that not quite so easy uh, thing. So what I I'm going it. to try and do is make the liquid visible. Okay, and so I'm going to take some dye and stick it in between the two uh, cylinders in the fluid. And okay. now I'm going to put some dye in there. So that's just basically paint. Right, some so special some paint. colored. Stuff. I'll put an S to stand for what? Science. science. Thank you. Excellent. You got it. Science. And so here is this S, science. And can we make science break down? No. I mean, so we, we can't destroy science. So science is here to stay. So let's see what that looks like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to Mix. start stirring this to see if we can stir this up. So let's count. Wow. One. It's gone. So let's keep going. Already gone. Mixed. Two. Three. I think that is totally mixed. It. I four. don't see a thing anymore. Actually, I mean, that's anything? just nothing. Okay, so that was five. So let's keep going. One. Two, three. I don't see anything, Sid. Okay. Four. Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> so science is preserved. We're able to, so science is not in danger of disappearing. And what you just saw was not some sleight of hand, but it's actually just a demonstration of something that was a theorem in fluid mechanics, okay? And so that's all we showed you here, that we can reverse time if we have the special conditions to do that. So now that was not water, it was a clear liquid, it was a thicker liquid, uh, it was, what was that, Sid? Th this was just glycerol. So those of you who want to do this, glycerol is what you can buy at a uh, grocery, uh, at a uh, drugstore and you can put it in to make bigger and better soap bubbles. Okay. That's right. So now we're, we're, I'm using, I want to show you something more about liquids. And this time it's, it's a liquid we're all familiar with. It's just water. But we made it a little different by putting particles in, tiny little particles. That's water? And so it is water with a little bit of particles. And so what you see is it is still fluid. See that? It's fluid, all right. It's, it's really fluid. But it has some very interesting properties, this fluid. It does, okay. What are they? So uh, what, what do you think I should do with it? Well, let's see. Is it, I don't believe it's really very deep. Oh, should we, should we look, look, this thing sinks right in. It's, it's, a, it's a liquid. I mean, we're now almost 10, almost 10 uh, inches in here, right? So uh, I think, see that? This is, this is a, a, a liquid here. Whoa! Yeah, what the heck? 
cares? Now that is pretty good. So what can you do with a non-Newtonian fluid? Well, let's see. What are you going to try and do with that? I want to see if I can walk on. No, you can't walk on. Yes, that. I, I think I can walk on this, but I don't trust it quite yet. So I use these things here, right? So let me just get into my little boots here. So all right. So let's walk over this. What? Do that again. Look! Look at that. I can't believe it. Can you jump on it? Whoa, look at him. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so keep going. So should we should do some, some more jumping maybe right now? Okay, let's see what happens here when, when I uh, try to get out of, uh, uh, out of this. This is really Whoa. weird. Look at this. All right. So, what else can you do with that stuff? So, somebody said non-Newtonian fluid. Here we got some more of it. All right. Yeah. Oh boy, here it comes. Right? Are you ready you're in the front row? You okay? All right. We want to. No, you're not ready. Okay. No, I, I I jumped on it, but let's try something else. Let's drop something onto it. Right. So, what do we drop onto it? Yeah. A bar? No. How about an egg? How about an egg? Okay, is that what's going to happen to Okay, this? let's see what happens when we drop. Okay, this egg needs to quiet. Eggs only work when it's really quiet. Okay. Careful, careful. Oh, look at that. It doesn't even sink in. So here is that egg. Now, you probably all think that this is a hard-boiled egg, right? And that we're just kidding you that it's really uh, not a raw egg, but a hard-boiled egg. So I think we need a volunteer to come down and help us figure with this. OK, so would you help us? Now, would, we need you to put this glove on so that you don't get egg all over yourself. <laughs> and then we'll come over here. And make sure this is a real To make sure this is a real egg. egg. Uh, yeah. And so let's put it under here. OK. And so we invite you to take this egg, no, no, with, with this hand, and just smash it against the wall. Yeah, yeah. More. More. Yeah, keep More. There. <laughs> OK. So is that a soft boiled egg? A, a raw egg. <laughs> <laughs> Show it to everyone. It's raw. It's okay. Raw egg. Thank you. Did you want to dump that in there and we'll take this off so that Okay, Thank let's you. give him a hand. All right, so so one of the things that you saw when you mix little particles in water is it doesn't splash like water. It, it doesn't let things in, sink in. I could jump on it. And now we're going to see if when I drop something onto it, whether it splashes like water or maybe not, right? So uh, again, what should I drop on it now? OK. get wet over there. You okay with that? All right. Well, maybe I should go a little higher. Is that high enough? No, higher. Hey, Is that good enough? Oh, 
No, no, that only works for the bowling ball when you're really quiet. And, and I'm really sorry about you guys. You get all smacked now, a uh, uh, splash on. Okay? Three, shh, three, two, one. Look at that. No splash. So that's what makes us a very special fluid. Sit right here. So that's what made that really special, right? It did not splash and it behaved very unusual. All right. That okay, so now you've heard a lot about liquids and now we want to go back to gases. And so you know that there's air in this room, right? So you can maybe feel it if you go fast enough. You want to feel some air? So, can you feel this? Can you feel the air? You can't see it though, can you? You didn't see it though. But, but can you feel it? Can you feel it? Well, maybe it'd be good if we got to oh, right. see it. All right, let's make it visible. And we put some smoke in here. Okay. And now we show you what you just felt. Okay, on your mark, get set. These beautiful vortices. Okay, and so now we want to see something more that air can do. Okay, so uh, uh, for this, we're going to need a volunteer. So can we get another volunteer? So could you come down? Sit. Look. All right. Okay. So, oops. yeah, uh, so we have to be careful. Okay, uh, come on down. No, no, no. Okay, no, 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 come no, no, over this, this, this way. Yeah. This, this is where we need you. Okay, so what I want, need to make sure that is, that your job is to make sure that we are not cheating and we're not fooling anything, okay? And so what I want to see is, is there any liquid in this tank? There's no liquid, you're sure of that? Do you see liquid? No, no liquid in there. Okay. So what we want to know is whether we can, with that gas that we've put in here, can we float, what is this? A boat. Okay, so this is a boat. So let's see if we can float a boat. Okay, so Heinrich, can you help me remove this very carefully? Heavy lid. Oh. Okay, and there's nothing in there, right? Uh, well, that's what it looks like, so let's... Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, right. Whoa! So this just floats just like this. So you can do, you can be even more rough with it. And, but how would you sink a boat? Well, you have to get Well, right. this is more just a gas, this gas. So this is a heavy gas that we put in here. And now we're putting it in the boat because it's, and it's good. There you go. It just sank. Oh, 
So, so what we want you to do now is we want to see whether we can see this over here. And so this is a very special kind of optics which you're going to help us show. Okay. So. Yeah. So we're, this we're, is this is now the a, a new thing. We want to make it sure that you can see what just happened. And you can't see that gas over here, but now Sid will show you how it can be made visible. Okay. Not quite yet. We're being aligned. Ready. Okay. So I can take let me just make sure I have the real gas in here. So I take this, full of this gas, and now I'm gonna pour it in here. Okay, and so you got to see this, and so you, we're going to ask you to help on this. Could you do the same thing? There's no liquid in there, right? Okay, Scoop and so it just, there. just pour it over the top, yeah, from there. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, now we need you to do something else. So, so um, can you stick your hand right in there? Oh, no, no, uh, no. Uh, so we want you to just be like that. So what we can see is that the heat is rising from your hand. You see all those, the, the plumes. So we're visualizing that you're warmer than the air, the air around you, and so air is coming off of your hand, and that's what we're being able to see with this uh, apparatus. Mm -hmm. so, so you're a real warm guy, and so <laughs> this is, we're very happy. So thank you very much. Okay. So thank you very much. All right. So this is something that you see sometimes in the summer when you drive along a highway and you look over the really hot asphalt and then you know you see that maybe in the distance things look a little bit different and so that is one way to visualize the slight light changes in the air when it gets hot right and that's what we just saw here even at room temperature but I think that was too too quiet, Sid. We need to do a little okay, bit more Okay, we need danger. to have some danger? Is it time for danger? It is time for danger. Okay, so let's get some danger. We are now ready to put our lives at risk for science. And so what is this? It's a bowling ball. So we're going to go bowling, right? That's the idea. But we're going to do bowling with a twist. Okay, so here is this bowling ball, and a, just an ordinary bowling ball, but it's hung from the ceiling on this wire. And you could go bowling and send it down the lane, but what is, it'll come right back to you, right? And so it's going to do that because this is kind of a pendulum. It's just a large, long pendulum, and it'll come right back to where you started. And so that's what we want to show you is that this bowling ball will really come back to where you started, but no higher. It won't come up higher than where you started. It'll only come back to where you started. So we're going to try and show you that by putting this up next to this wall. And so, see, we have another egg here. Okay, and so we're going to try and see whether, uh, you know, if, if I'm right, this egg will stay intact and nothing will happen. Okay, so here we go. Oh! Oh my goodness! Anyway. So there's there's an issue here with so, the, with this. But I right? still believe in physics. Yeah, but if you do, Sid, you got to put your life on the line for that, right? I have to. Bl oh yes, no! If you think that I'm that not that on the line. My yes. You play like the egg the now. You do the egg. And okay, then so pretend I'm an egg. Okay, more precisely, pretend my nose is an egg. Okay, so here, I'm going to start this ball at my nose, and I'm going to have my head against the wall so I cannot get out of the way. Okay, so I am stuck if, you know, but I believe in physics. So here it goes. I'm starting at my nose. Is that at my nose? It's at my nose. Okay, so they agree it's at my nose. So here it goes. Oh. Ah! <laughs> okay. And so, those of you who were observant, I hope, realized what I did in the, when I smashed the egg. 
is of course I gave it a little extra push at the beginning so that it would come back and that, so get a little, you know, your adrenaline running, hoping my nose would get flatter than it already is. Okay, so this is, uh, so, but we really believe that this is not going to ever come up and hit my nose if we started it off without that extra push. Okay, so now it's time for even more death-defying activities. So Heinrich is going to now put his life on the line in a different activity. All right, so what do we have here? We have gas, gas in a big bottle, a high pressure. And if I pull this out and I push this thing, gas comes out that way. And if I'm sitting on this little chair, which has wheels, I will go that way, right? Very so dangerous. It's very dangerous, so you better put your hat on. Oh. Oh, that's who's, well, he's got a very, very large head because he's got a lot of brains. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now, is make sure that his brains stay intact. Okay. Okay. Now okay, this so is this is going to be a little bit quiet. loud. Quiet. Oh, quiet, quiet. So I would stick my... That's why you want to do this. It's really quiet. Now you over there, sir, you know what quiet means, right? Okay. One, two, three. So, uh, and what, or what, what else we have here is a magnetic rail. So, if we put this superconductor on top of this rail, we'll see that it oh, floats. Can you push that? Yeah, let's see what happens if we push it. Oh, oh it can travel. So, now I have a piece of paper. What would happen if I put this paper in between? Let's see. It goes over. Right what do you think will happen if we turn this around? Well, I would definitely want to try that. So okay. here we have another track, which is also made of magnets. And I also have another piece of superconductor just came out from the liquid nitrogen. So now I'll try to stick it to the rail from below. Oh, 
Maybe not cool enough. Let's try it again. run like these. So these superconducting trains will have no resistance and they would be able to move very efficiently and really at really fast speeds. That's really cool. So, well, oh, I hope... Look who's back. How about some music? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tense. Now, after all of that, I'd like some nice, cool, calm music. What kind of music do you have? Well, let's see. This is Chicago, right? So we need blues. Can you all hear that? No, right? Well, let me, let me play it a little louder here over the, the uh, PA, the system. So now you can hear it. I just checked it. That's okay. Mama told me so. So let's see all this wire here. I don't know. Fit. I don't know what what's going on here. Well, what's this? Honey? But when sweet talk is awful. Oh, no, why don't you work on that? Oh, what did I do? Oh. Well, let me see so here. why don't you take that in? Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, let's. Oh. Whoa! Really? What, what, what happened? <laughs> oh, let's make that a little louder. So. Uh, Do it. He's got brains. No, 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 it's water. Water, water. mostly water. Sit, look, here, 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 try this again. Oh, yes, great, it's water. wonderful. Now, if it works between Sid and me, let's see if it works between all of you. The whole row. Oh. Oh. Hold hands. So be friendly with your neighbor. Hold hands. I don't know. Why don't you try here? No, no, not here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See, now that was just a little bit of electricity that went all the way through these wires to the amplifier. And somewhere in between, we put ourselves, right? We just and we're still it. able to go through all of us. And there was a little bit of electricity. And it didn't hurt anyone. And now let's see what happens when we put a lot of electricity up. Wouldn't that be interesting? So, you know when you walk over a carpet, and then you get electric shock maybe if you touch a doorknob? So we have here a machine that acts just like you running over a carpet and makes an enormous amount of voltage. That's this thing right That's here. That's that thing there. OK, so let's see what it does. No, it's already. And so let me turn this on. Okay, so let's put this like that. All right, turn it on. So it makes these sparks that you all so know. Can you all see those sparks? Okay, but now, we can make them stop. Start. Stop. 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 All I'm doing is pointing at this thing, and because we have power, as physicists, we get to make this thing stop. Or start. Or stop. Or start. Okay, so this is one of the things that we get to, to do. Let's do a, get a big spark. Let's see how, whether we can get really large sparks. 
Okay, so why don't we uh, now do that with you and see what else we can do with this. So I have nothing up my sleeves, right? Okay, nothing up my sleeves. But I have a light bulb here, okay? So I'm going to try and light this light bulb. So it's not connected to anything. It won't work. Uh-oh. Okay, it's... But I'm holding it. Won't that help? All right, let's see. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it in any case. Get that a little closer. Okay, so may the force be with you. Okay, so one last thing that uh, we'd like to do. Well, that's true. We have more for you. Well, maybe not. Uh. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. So now I'm going to try and see if I can be a light bulb. Now, uh, oh, one thing, I should take this off. And there's one last thing that I want to take off, which is uh, my eyeglasses. Because once when I was doing this uh, experiment in front of a class, I forgot to take my light, my uh, glasses off, and I started getting shocks between my eyeballs and my glasses. <laughs> and if you want to know what it feels like to freak out, I recommend you do that. I mean, that was... Uh, uh, so I learned my lesson. What about the earphones? Uh, Let's take a look. And one last thing I want to do is... Uh, Don't you like this new outfit? Yeah, I do. Okay, so... Here we go. Give right. me up, Scotty. So we get a little closer. <laughs> oh, no. oh. <laughs> oh, I'm down. Thank goodness. All right, so that machine, right, that generates that, that uh, voltage, that is like Jurassic Park, 100,000 volts and more. That's really high voltage. And now we're going to use something that is at least that dangerous. It's another way of creating an enormous amount of voltage. That's this box right here. And then we have a can right here. What's in that can? In that can, I don't know. In that can is nothing. There's nothing in the can. In that can should be nothing. It is inside this set of coils here. No, no. Uh, we need to probably put it in the middle. And, uh, what the idea is now, we will discharge a lot of that high voltage and current, and it presumably will do something to that can, and we've got to find out what that is. Okay, so what's going to happen? Let's, let's see, uh, Heinrich, try and put some current into it. But I'm going to get out of the way. Right. Uh, first of all, we need to make sure the camera crew is ready, because this is... If it happens the way we want it, it happens very fast, very loud. We want to be ready with the camera. And we let you know when that is about to happen. Are you ready? So 
everyone. So I will be calling out how much voltage we have here. And this thing is charging up. We are 1,000 volts right now. And Heinrich, how much comes out of the electric outlet? 100 volts. This is right now 25 times as much. We wow. are actually way more than that. We have 4,000, 5,000 volts, 6,000. I know somebody over there wants 8,000. Coming up. <laughs> Bam! And now you can see what it did to this can. It, it, it looks like something, doesn't it? All right, so what we're going to do as usual, we're spooling back the tape here. Lydia, are we ready? Not yet? No. Nope. This is so fast and was so loud that it needs probably something like 10,000 frames per second to capture that. Okay, 5,000 only. Only, and let's see what we what we can can find out. Are we ready? Okay, here we go. Uh huh. Nope. Now we are ready. Ah, come on. Well, we don't see any screen here. Maybe we need an expert to help us with that. We, I must have pressed the wrong button. There, there it is. Okay. All right. Okay, let me uh, make that a little bigger first so you can really see it. Here we go. Right? So unleashing that current through that coil creates a very strong force, and that force just crushes that can and pushes it the two halves to the side. And you saw how that, and you heard how that blew out, right? Okay, so I like this idea of crushing cans and getting rid of them. So here's another can. It's more rugged than the uh, soda can. It's pretty tough. This is a 50 gallon drum made of steel. It's reinforced. So this thing is not going to collapse, is it? Yeah. Any, no, it doesn't. Anybody feel pressure in this room? Any one of you under pressure? It's a holiday season. You've got to be under pressure. As a matter of fact, you are right now under a lot of air pressure, amongst many other pressures possibly. But that air pressure, at least, is balanced on the inside of you by some equal pressure going the other way, right? So How that's much pressure is it? It's 15 pounds per a little square inch. 15 pounds per That's a, a lot of pressure. Well, I don't know. So what we're going to do here is we take the pressure out from the inside and let the pressure from the outside push on this can. Let's see if that's enough to But 15 do pounds per square inch, I mean, that doesn't sound like, I can lift 15 pounds. I know. but. There's a lot of square inches. Oh, here. that's right. There's a lot of square inches. OK, so that's why it's going to be uh, uh, Right, so right now there is a pump connected by this hose. Here's the pump. It sucks out the air if we push the button. So here we go. We just suck out the air. No pressure on the inside or less pressure. Lots of pressure on the outside. What do you think is going to happen? We have to have a bet. Yeah. Who, who thinks something will happen? Really? But look, this is an industrial steel can. It's not going to do anything. This is not running. See? It, it's not running? No wonder it's not doing anything. Yeah. See? Whoever raised their hand was wrong. Nothing is going to happen here. No, no, we've got to turn this on. That makes 
more sense. It, it helps to have uh, so, something happening when you. Uh, now. Okay. now it's running. Okay. No, see? Okay, that's, that's a just a little. Drum, nothing will happen. I don't see anything happening yet. Anyway, there are these, these rings around it. They, they make yeah, sure that nothing happens. That sounds like something. It sounded like, but I don't see anything. I mean, if you step on a Coke can, of course it's it'll crash. crash. But that's, you know, a steel can. Reinforced steel can. And all we're using is the pressure we're under every day. That's right. Just ordinary pressure. Ordinary air. But don't try it at home. I don't know, Sid. I think nothing is going to happen on this one. OK. Uh, I mean, sometimes these things are really good. You know, um, do we have a hammer to knock it? No, that was no. just for the oh, glass. Oh, that was just for the glass. I, I see. OK. No, no. We, uh, and anyway, what would a hammer do for with a no, steel no, drum? It's, it's reinforced. That's right. Yeah, so uh, there's not much we can do about it. Maybe we give it a second. Why don't we just wheel out some, something else? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so did you feel that? There was a nice air wave coming off that thing, right? That's the air going back in. All right, what do I have here? Ping pong ball, right? Yeah. That's a beautiful little light little ping pong ball. I want to get that ping pong ball through this cardboard. No way. Here. Come on, come on, come on. I can do it. No, maybe not. No way. Yes. Did, did he get it through there? No. no, didn't go through. Try it again. I uh, can't. It ran, it ran off. Oh, it ran off. Uh, anyway, you, you know what will happen, right? It, it won't, won't Here go you go. through. So try it again. Okay. Really, do, do it really hard. Ah! Well, it got to the other side, Heinrich. <laughs> I mean, but... <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. No way. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so, well, maybe we should try academic strength. Academic strength. Okay. So let's see what he has in mind. So, you know what this thing is? It's essentially your, your potato gun, just a little bit uh, refined. So here's the ping pong ball. You might see that back here. It's inside a tube. And what we have done is we have put a, a piece of aluminum foil on this side of the tube, and also a piece of aluminum foil on the other side of the tube, sealed it off. And now I will take the air out of this tube. Now this is made so that it will not crush. It will not crush, just the air comes out. And then what we're going to do is here, we will hit it, break through the seal, air will rush in, push the ping pong ball almost up to the speed of sound, and then we'll see if it makes it through here. Now of course we want to see what happens on the other side. And so I have a little light uh, that I put here just so that we, we light it nicely and, uh, and want to see if it comes out on the other side. All right? And of course, we're going to film this with uh, high-speed video to show you then what will happen. All right? So again, once this is evacuated, air will rush in, push the ball that way, and through another piece of aluminum foil, so it has to break through aluminum again, and then through the cardboard, hopefully, okay? See what, what we can do here. Okay, so he's evacuating it. Well, I haven't turned it on yet. Now we okay, go. Okay, now it's going. Five, 10, 15, 20. So Sid is reading out the vacuum level. So it goes, the higher the number, the lower the pressure. 25. 27. Now, this is another one of these quiet experiments, okay? 
29. I'll tell you when. 30. Okay, so we're getting close, but just a little bit longer, a little bit more patience. Okay, so we are within a few seconds of it. Okay, Heinrich, I think you are ready to go. All right, so now I'm going to puncture the seal. Ready? Three, two, one. It blew out my light bulb. Now, since this is really, really fast, uh, for this experiment, we had to go to a lot of frames per second. And Nidhi, this is, what, 25,000? 25,000 frames a second. And so we're just finding the, the point where we queue it up. All right, we're ready. Let me turn this down. Here you see the light bulb. And now from the right, there, should be, there you see the cardboard. And see how it went right through the light bulb. Let's do that one more time. So this is something that you can only see here with us because we use these very, very nice high-speed cameras and have a fantastic crew here. Now we're coming. We're coming up to another danger level, and that's why this uh, screen comes down. Because, you know, uh, you can evacuate gases and then there's pressure from the outside, but you can also fill things with something that turns into a gas, and then the pressure builds up, and something can explode. That's what happens. So, I don't know about you, Heinrich, but I'm getting kind of hot, and I'm getting kind of thirsty. Yeah, let's so what do we have to drink around here? Well, let's see. What uh, do we have? Well, we have some liquid nitrogen here. Would that I be see good? That, that, that would be good. So liquid nitrogen is pretty good. It's a nice liquid. It's just a little cold. I mean, uh, it's liquid air. If your air was cold enough, if this cold, it would be a uh, liquid. So we're going to try and um, put this, uh, some liquid nitrogen into this bottle so that we can see what it's like to drink it. So this should be moving a little bit further away. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Heinrich, will you help fill this? Yeah, let me, let me actually do it like this. Okay. Do it. Okay, so we fill some of that liquid nitrogen okay. in there. Okay, is that enough? No. No, okay. A little bit more? Is that enough? Okay, so a little bit more. Is that enough? No, a little bit more. A little bit more? A little bit more. Uh, just a little bit more. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, little that's enough. Is that enough, sir? I think that's okay. enough. Okay, so. Are you ready? So I'm going to screw the top on this bottle. Now listen, it's going to be tight, and the poor gas is going to try to get out. Mm. 
I don't know. <laughs> Now, did you see all that? Did you see all that? We, we, will, we will be able to show to you now in slow motion what really happened. Here you go. So this thing turned into a real rocket. All right. Okay, so just before we do our last uh, demonstration for you, uh, we want to give thanks to all the people who really made this event possible and who put a lot of work into making it a success. And so, uh, first I'd like to thank Nidhi Pashini and Kai To for all of the high-speed camera work and the superconductivity experiment. Of course, Van Bistro, and Andrew Gentleman, who did all of the work backstage to make all of this work. The open house, which I hope you will all go to and see the open house and the demo alley, was put together by Chang Chin, Justin Jariller, Eileen Chu, and Maria Jimenez and her family. Thank you. And then our audiovisual crew, who has been able to film all of this for us, is Stephen Bandick, Warren Friedel, Chris Kielch. Colin Hudler, and Freddie Peralta. And our photographer was Meng Fei He. And then, of course, none of this would have been able to take place without the financial support of our physics department, the James Franck Institute, and our Materials Research Science and Engineering Center, the MRSA. We thank them all. Okay, so uh, I guess this is towards the end. Yeah, we want to thank all of you for coming here. We had a great time with you. I hope you had a great time. I hope... We hope that you will come back next year. We hope you'll tell all your friends. And that uh, I guess that's about all that we have to say. That's so it. So let's do it. Okay. On your mark. One, two, two three. three.